Hey guys, my name is Elena and I'm an expat living and working in Ukraine. Today, however, I'm filming 800 kilometers away from my usual location of Odessa. I'm filming in the beautiful city of Ivano-Frankivsk. Ladies and gentlemen, due to specific balancing features of this aircraft, we ask you to remain seated until we invite you for disembarkation. We just checked in into our apartment. It is super cute. It's very small, but it has everything that we need. It is super stylish. So there's a bed, two bedside tables. There's a TV, some hangers. It doesn't have a wardrobe. It has two chairs inside, has an AC, which is super important because it gets hot in the summer and a beautiful uh, big mirror to see yourself. The star of this apartment is the beautiful balcony on which I think me and Eugene will be sipping coffee in the morning. Opens with a beautiful view of the uh, courtyard. It's really quiet here. So yeah, I'll see you in a bit. Ivano-Frankivsk is never the destination in itself. If people come here, especially locals, it means they're headed to one of the two places. The first one are the Carpathian Mountains. In the Carpathian Mountains, there's a very famous ski resort called Bukavel. It's super popular also outside of Ukraine and a lot of people go there during the summer. We, however, are headed to the Zakarpatia region and I'll film a separate episode about that. But um, let's just enjoy the city for now and see how Ivan Frankivs looks. The main place to stroll in Ivano-Frankivsk is the Nezalezhnosti street or Stametrivka as the locals call it. It is said that once the street was only 100 meters long, but nowadays it's definitely longer than that. And that's a good thing because this place is filled with all sorts of restaurants and shops and cafes and outdoor terraces. The two places that I got recommended here are Delicacia. <laughs> I'm not sure I pronounced that correctly. That is a very good coffee shop with Western style food and desserts. Absolutely recommend. The other place is called Familia, and that's a place for dinners and lunches, more hearty meals and more Ukrainian style dishes. In both of them, we spent around 500 grivnias, including tips, and we had very filling dishes, and I cannot praise enough how polite the waiters are there. So definitely passing the recommendation on to you. Both of those places are absolutely worth it. If you are on a budget, there is a place called Disyatka. It's a bistro-style place. Also, a lot of locals recommended the place, but we haven't been to it yet. So, you know, check it out if you are on a budget. If you see sculptures like this around the city, it is because Ivana Frankivsk for the last 20 years hosts competitions for blacksmiths. So blacksmiths from all over Ukraine and not only gather here to make their sculptures. And every year during city day, they leave one of the newly forged sculptures for the city to exhibit on its streets. What a great tradition and what a great way to make your city more beautiful and modern. Ivano-Frankivsk is a small town in the heart of western Ukraine. And when I say small, I don't mean by population because over 200,000 people live here, but rather about the vibe that it gives to you. It is rather provincial. For most of its history, and the city was founded in the 17th century, if I'm not mixing up the dates, it was called Stanislav or Stanislavov. And only the last 60 years or so, it was renamed after the famous Ukrainian poet Ivan Franko. You can get here in Ivan Frankivsk pretty easily. There are options by plane, by train, and by bus. We decided to go by plane. It's only one hour and a half, and you pay 2,300 grivnias for one one-way ticket. There's also a very good option by train. Uh, we haven't taken it, but people told us it's pretty comfortable. Usually one sleeper uh, seat in the train is either 700 grivnias if you are okay to stay in a compartment with three other people, or they also have the deluxe version, which is 1,800. To get from the airport to the city center or just travel for Ivana Frankivsk, you can get one of the two taxi services. Those are Uklon or Bolt. 
do not attempt to get uh, one of the random taxis that are on the street or at the airport. They will charge you an arm and a leg for the service. Just use the apps. It's much more comfortable and you always know the price. Originally, like so many other European cities, Ivana Frankivsk was a fortress. But since then, the city really changed a lot and only one of the original walls remains intact until today. So around this fortress in 2000, the bastion was reconstructed and transformed into an entertainment center. This is a place where there are a lot of coffee shops and restaurants and cafes and art exhibition and whatnot. There's even a contemporary art gallery called Art Namur. So we'll see if we can find that. The art gallery is apparently closed today and it has a very small collection of modern art. Check it out if you're interested in this kind of stuff. They have a lot of Ukrainian stuff, a lot of very beautiful pottery and walls and things that will remind you about the history of the region. So definitely bring your shopping here and the people here are also super nice. However, I didn't find really any restaurants or cafes. Everything is upstairs and you know, if you want to drink something, then probably this is not the best place. facing super hot temperatures in Kiev and I thought after the temperature will drop in ivano Frankivsk it will be much better but now it's raining like all the time here. We got home because the weather got a little bit crazy and right now it's raining pretty hard so I am hoping and keeping my fingers crossed I will be able to go in the evening and film the rest of my video because there are a couple of very cool places that I want to show to you but right now I'm gonna go dry myself up and probably enjoy a hot cup of tea. Prompriladre Navace is not one of your typical touristic places, it's definitely off the beaten path, but I really wanted to show it to you because it's one of those examples of gentrification. Initially, it was a factory, you can see the original sign just behind me, but now it's a co-working space, so if you're planning to stay here and work for more than two days, I think this is a really good alternative. You'll find good people, AC, and really good internet. Let's have a look inside. Okay, it seems like we are here and besides the co-working there are a lot of places and spaces that I think anyone can use. I'm hoping, really hoping to find somewhere where we can drink coffee or something refreshing that is super hot. Guys, do not miss this place. It's honestly a one of a kind space in Ivan Frankivsk and it's a hidden gem. Like they have good beer, they have one of the best views, they also have food here and it's also a co-working. So it, even if you're not planning to work here, just come for a visit, sip a beer. Trust me, it's worth it. Cheers. Shevchenko Park is one of the best places to stroll for both tourists and locals. It is some 30 minutes away from the city center, so it might not be on your touristic route, but trust me, it is super green, it is super beautiful. And in the past, it has been a wild oak grove. A couple years ago, it was equipped with cobblestone to make the exploration of the park much more comfortable. Nowadays, it's a place where couples come for dates, propose to each other, or come for a photo session. And uh, let's have a look at it.
just outside of Shevchenko Park is this beautiful huge lake which is a prime spot for sunsets since today was a pretty cloudy day and also rainy and it's over an hour until sunset time I don't think we're gonna wait here to see it unfortunately but also if you like riding a bike or riding your skate or maybe renting some electric scooters this is a pretty good place I see a lot of locals exercising here and riding all kind of electric and non-electric transport so this seems like a good opportunity if you like those things.